for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the cool things that happens in the fall, Brian, one of my favorite things is talking about what seed we're going to order for next year. It's exciting because the next crop is already, well, the planning for it anyway, is underway. And one of the big decisions this year is going to be which seed trait we're going to plant, and I'm sure that's a decision for you as well. So we'll talk about the seed traits that should be on the market for next year. As you can tell, Darren gets passionate about that. Here's one of the things I get passionate about, how you get horrible information from time to time. For example, you have probably been told in the past, you have high soil pH and there's nothing you can do about it. What a bunch of nonsense. There's absolutely a way to fix that. We can talk about how you can get that done on your farm. Well, one of the other things that you may be getting bad information about is our weed of the week. If you still have it on your farm, we'll show you how to eliminate this tough weed. And first, here's our farm basics. A few years ago, Darren and I worked together with Case IH to develop the Ag PhD Harvest Loss app. And we want to talk about that just a little bit today during our Farm Basics time. Well, there's a number of different crops that we've covered on this app. So if you're harvesting one of these crops, you can get out behind the combine, count the number of seeds that are on the ground and figure out what your loss is. Now, uh, when we look at corn and soybeans and wheat, oats, barley and sorghum, those ones we've got on the app already. Brian, I'd like to add canola. I know those seeds are tiny and it would be a real oh, pain to goodness. try and count them, but that would be fun. All right, so here, here's the whole thing. <laughs> maybe what not, we, maybe what, not. What we really care about is not necessarily how many seeds are on the ground. What we care about is how many dollars are on the ground. So with this app, you can also punch in what your cost of production is, or you can punch in whatever you expect to sell that grain for. Either way, however you want to look at that. But the point is, you want to figure out dollars and cents in addition to just bushels per acre. Well, the big thing, Brian, regardless of which dollar amount you use to value the crop is we're leaving some dollars on the table if we don't get out behind the combine and see what's going on. If we're, if we're having some grain going out the back, we need to make some adjustments here to fix this right now when we can still make more money. Well, that's true, but I really look at three different types of harvest loss. The first is it was already on the ground before I got there with the combine, so you want to look at that. Then with the head, how much are we losing at the head? So the way you determine that is basically you pull in and then you have to pull back just a little bit. And then finally, yes, you've got the grand total of what's sitting behind the combine. Either you had loss in the combine, you had loss at the head, or you had loss already on the ground before you started. Well, I know this is a little bit depressing to be out behind the combine and say, oh no, I left $20 an acre on the ground but you really do need to be looking at this as you go throughout harvest this yep. year. So if you're a non-farmer, just so you understand, this is in unbelievably important. We as farmers have done everything possible to raise the best crop all through the season. We don't want to see it end up on the ground and see those dollars lost. Well, another thing we don't want to see out in our fields is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. My satisfaction with Extend the Max on controlling weeds is this is second to none. We had fine results on the weed side and we had excellent results on the yield side. It's taken down the weeds, cleaning the fields up. Our confidence is high. There's no reason not to have Extend the Max on your fields. Put it on challenging acres and they're clean.
Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. Because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. I get really excited each year about the hybrid selection and variety selection that goes into our fields. I, I'm excited about the differences from one variety to the next, one hybrid to the next, but today we want to focus on the other part of that decision, the trait decision. Which trait are we going to use and, and which ones are new that are coming out? Now in corn, there are some new traits that are coming along. In soybeans, there are some exciting traits as well. So let's start with corn, the Nutricepta trait where we've got VT Double Pro stacked with Viptera is one that you may consider depending on where you're at in the country. All right, so explain that just a little bit. What is the farmer gaining as opposed to the VT Double Pro that was tremendously popular last year in the United States? Well, Double Pro is above ground protection. So we're talking about no rootworm protection, just protection against things like corn borers, for example. But we've got multiple traits in there to try to get good protection on a wide variety of insects. What adding that Viptera trait does, though, is it gives us another mode of action against earworm, western bean cutworm, uh, some of the tough insects, especially those that attack the ear. And Tricept has been uh, one that's widely accepted in the south, uh, and in areas where these worms that attack the ear are prevalent. Now we haven't seen hybrid selection yet or hybrid choices for farmers way up into the early maturities in the upper Midwest. So you have to talk to your seed dealer and see exactly how early he'll have hybrids this year in the Tricepta trait. Outside of that in corn, really haven't seen a lot of change in terms of the trait offerings. So Tricepta really is the, the new trait that's on the block, but you still have the decision to make about several of the traits that have been out for a while, including smart stacks. A few years ago, there were a lot of people using VT triple or smart stacks, something where you had good rootworm protection. And for a little while, Monsanto was talking about, well, we'd like everybody to go to the full trait package. We'll price it appropriately in different areas of the country, but they didn't do that. Basically, smart stacks got too high priced and compared to VT double, there wasn't enough value there. So a lot of people went to the VT double and went away from the rootworm protection. Now, I would caution you to say, uh, I don't have rootworms or I don't have many rootworms, so I don't need that kind of protection. Look, there are probably going to be rootworms out in your field. I get that there might not be a lot, and you might say, well, I really don't know how much I have because I'd have to dig plants up, and it's hard to tell. It's kind of hidden yield loss is the way I look at it. But one way or the other, you're probably going to, in many cases, have to do something for rootworm, whether you want to use a liquid product at planting, a dry product at planting, or a trait like SmartStack. So I would just encourage you going into this next year, at least be considering that and at least try some on some of your acres. So in other words, if nothing else, I'd probably say at least one or 2% of my acres, I would use some smart stacks. At least one or 2% of my acres, I would at least use some insecticide. So then I know for comparative purposes on my own farm, does this pay or does it not? All right, let's turn to soybeans now because there are some traits that are either just getting approved or we're hopeful for approval by spring. Uh, the one we're hopeful about is in list. We, we've been talking about this now for a number of years. There's a new 2,4-D, 2,4-D choline that doesn't have the volatility like the old amines and esters. It's an excellent weed control product and the Enlist trade has got tolerance to this 2,4-D but also to Roundup and to Liberty. That's exciting. There's three different products that you could potentially use on there that this crop would be tolerant to. We've seen Enlist in other crops like cotton already. It's worked very well. 
The herbicide performance has been good, so we're excited for that to come in soybeans. We'll see if they get approval. Uh, many times uh, with things like this, it's just up to the regulators. All the data has been submitted. From what I understand, Corteva has no more data requests they're getting from other countries. Primarily China right now is the one that we're waiting on. There is a new trait though that did get approved. That's the Liberty Link GT27 where you can spray Roundup or Liberty. So now we've got Roundup Ready Beans, Liberty Link soybeans, dicamba tolerant soybeans that are tolerant to dicamba and Roundup, and these new soybeans that are tolerant to Liberty and Roundup. Well, here's the one that I'm excited for down the road. It's the stack of dicamba together with Liberty. So if I could have Roundup, Dicamba, and Liberty all in the same bean, that'd be fantastic. It's kind of like the Enlist deal where I have Roundup and Liberty, but there's 2,4-D tolerance. So either way, the point is I'd like to spray that Dicamba or 2,4-D early in the season as a burn down and for my first pass, and then my late pass could be Liberty. You see, Liberty is actually labeled later in the season than Dicamba is today. Dicamba is only to R1, and in some states it's much earlier than that but Liberty is labeled to R2, so I could spray a little bit later. I've got a different mode of action. I got a product there that I don't really have to worry about drift. I definitely don't have to worry about volatility. So to me, that makes a nice mix. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to in the future. Well, when you think about these beans tolerant to Liberty and Roundup, what does that add to the mix? Well, if you've got straight Liberty Link soybeans, you are concerned that a neighbor may drift some Roundup into you, so you do have some protection that way. But I look at it as this. You're probably not all Liberty Link crops. You probably have some Roundup Ready crops as well, so you've got a tank contamination possibility when your crop is not tolerant to both. So that does add that piece to the puzzle. Uh, with volunteer corn control, you may say, well, I had Liberty Link corn last year. I had Roundup Ready corn. Uh, yeah, maybe that would allow you another choice on controlling them, but so much of the corn today is stacked with Liberty and Roundup. I don't think this trade actually really gives you much on that. But in terms of weed control, you could potentially tank mix Liberty and Roundup together. That may give you a little more kick on certain weeds. Our recommendation is make sure that you have the right traits to control the insects and the weeds that you need to on your farm, but then obviously you want to pick the highest yielding products for your situation. Well, seed selection is really exciting, probably even more exciting than weed control, but we will talk about controlling our Weed of the Week later in the show. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Get your row crops off to the right start with an early riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH early riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH early riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at his stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges. And you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts. Fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. 
That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. If you're raising corn, soybeans, and wheat, the ideal pH, they say, is around 6.3 to 6.8. Let's say that your soil pH is 7.5, maybe it's 8, maybe even 8.5. How can you take that high pH soil and get it down into the ideal range? A lot of people may have told you, oh, you can't do it, but that's ridiculous. You absolutely can. Here are the most common reasons why your pH is high. Could be poor drainage, could be high salt, could be high magnesium. Those factors, we can solve all those. Let's start with the drainage. We want to make sure that we have good drainage in all fields. If your field is suffering from poor drainage, just get some tile out there, lower that water table. Over time, you're going to see that pH start to go down in most cases. We've had that in the field we're standing in right here. It's exactly what I had when I bought the field. I had some spots above 8, fixed the drainage, and over time that pH has been coming down. What you often see on soil tests is the leachable nutrients like sulfur and boron and potentially nitrates. Uh, those things will be a little bit higher. They'll be at elevated levels in areas where you've got poor drainage. Also, salts. Soluble salts will be typically on the rise in those kind of areas as well. So if you've got those problems, they would signify, just looking at a soil test, that you know something's happening with drainage and you're not able to move those things through the soil. They say that magnesium raises soil pH about 1.6 to 1 compared to calcium. Sodium, on the other hand, raises soil pH roughly 4 to 1 compared to calcium. If you have high sodium levels or sodic soil, you need to start with good drainage. Then we want to turn that sodium into a salt. You can usually do that by adding some sulfur. A lot of people will talk about gypsum, for example. That's calcium sulfate. Well, you can leave the calcium in the soil, which is great for your soil, gives your soil more porosity and then take the sulfate. Basically, that will interact with that sodium to form sodium sulfate. That's a salt. Salts are leachable, so once you have good drainage, you have decent soil porosity, you've maybe reduced some compaction out there, hey, now we can start flushing some of that sodium out in the form of salt. The big thing here is it's not going to happen overnight, so you're not gonna be able to flush the negative things out or the excess things out of your soil like in a week. Oh, I put some tile in, everything's just gonna magically disappear. It's gonna come down over time, but the important thing is to make that first right choice and get the process moving, get those things starting to move through your soil. Now, the next thing you can look at is what can I add to my soil? Brian talked about soil amendments a little bit, but I look at things like magnesium. If you've got too much magnesium, yeah, you can start moving it out of your soil, but let's add more of the good things. Now we can get that ratio right. So if our ratio is one to one with calcium and magnesium, that's not what we want. If we add more calcium, all of a sudden that ratio becomes heavily in favor of calcium and we can get our soils to the ideal mix. With elemental sulfur, you can also lower pH pretty quickly. At our Ag PhD Field Day site, we had David Hula, the world record corn producer, on our farm. And he said, you know what, you guys have some high pH in the plot area that I'm going to have a plot. He took a low 7s pH all the way down to 5.1 in just a few months with the use of elemental sulfur. The key with elemental sulfur, just like when we talk about lime, the key with elemental sulfur is very, very small particle size. The smaller the particle, the faster the pH change, the more permanent that change can be as long as you've taken care of the other soil factors that caused your pH to go high in the first place. If you add too much salt, uh, we want to improve the drainage. We want to quit applying manure or other high salt products, at least for a little while, to flush the salt out. I mean, you just have to look at the factors that cause your pH to get high in the first place. If you've fixed those factors, well, now that pH change should be permanent. Now, we don't want soil pH down to 5.1 if we're raising corn, soybeans, or wheat. We do want it in the sixes, and you can do that by adding a little bit of elemental sulfur as part of this process. But again, make sure you're taking care of drainage, compaction, calcium, all those things should be first. There are three more things that we didn't mention. First of all, uh, there's a couple other causes of high soil pH. You could have poor irrigation water quality. 
We've seen this across the country where we get irrigation water up in the 8.5 to 9 pH. And when you constantly add 8.5 or 9 pH out to your field, it's going to raise the pH over time. The other thing is erosion. And I've got some ground myself that I picked up that was heavily eroded years back. And those eroded hilltops were very high in soil pH. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is soil sampling. We've got to measure small areas out in the field with grid soil sampling to find these areas because high pH is probably not across your entire field. At least it's not exactly the same across your whole field. So it may take some different methods in different parts of your farm to fix it. Real quick, Darren mentioned erosion. Erosion is not the cause of high soil pH. You may have had subsoil that was high in pH. Well, now your subsoil is, in effect, your topsoil if all the topsoil left. So how do you lower that? By building new topsoil. Do everything you can to reduce tillage, improve overall organic matter, maybe add some manure, cover crops, those types of things. Make sure the drainage is good. Use elemental sulfur, all the steps we've talked about today. But you on your farm, regardless of the cause, you absolutely can lower your soil pH if you want to. It's up to you. Controlling our weed of the week is also up to you. We'll show you how to do it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the week is Russian knapweed. Ooh, this is one of the tough weeds that we see out, especially in non-crop land and, and acres that have been disturbed. Uh, it, it's, what do you say about Russian knapweed, Brian? Well, You've you say be it's, a, it's about a tough perennial. Control. Yeah, but it's a tough creeping perennial. And what you say about it is this has a huge root system. So you're going to need something that's going to get down into the root system and kill it permanently. Yes, you can burn it off with distinct or 2,4-D or dicamba or something like that. But generally speaking, we're going to talk about Tordon. Uh, milestone's not too bad either. Yeah, getting good root activity is going to be the big thing. And using a strong enough rate, if you see Russian knapweed getting started and you catch it in the first year, it starts off with a rosette and by uh, early summer, it's already starting to bolt. Uh, if you can control it at that time, well, it doesn't have the monstrous root system, but in just a couple of years, that root system is so well established that that control is difficult. The other thing that I would say is a lot of people talk about fall application of Tordon or Milestone to kill this weed. Well, it all depends on where you're at in the country. If you're a long ways north, late summer is better than fall. And here's where I'm going with this. You want to spray a week or two before your first frost of the year. So if it's starting to get pretty cold, you better hurry and get that application made before you hit that first frost date. The problem after the frost, you've burned off a lot of the top growth. You're not going to get a lot of product in through the leaves. And now you're simply counting on rain to wash the product in to get down to the root system. The control just isn't going to be as good. Now, when, when we talk about Russian knapweed, you may say, why do they call it Russian? It did actually come from Russia, uh, Ukraine, over in that area. So we see it more in the western U.S. and more towards the northern part of our country, which would be similar climates to where it was grown. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Russian knapweed, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. 
Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. The future. Does thinking about it fill you with fear and doubt? Do you try to second guess the grain markets just to keep your farm operating? Or do you have a plan? At Swenson Investments and Commodities, we recognize that finances for every farm are unique and input costs and break-evens can vary dramatically from field to field. Swenson's grain marketing specialists examine your farm's break-even on every acre and create a plan to help you sell at profitable levels. Take the emotion out of your grain marketing. Call Swenson's grain marketing specialists today. Are you looking to make a career in an ag-related field? The Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation is pleased to offer a $2,500 scholarship for students enrolled in an agricultural program for the 2018-2019 school year. The goal with this scholarship is to further the education of students who understand the importance of proper stewardship and responsible nutrient management for agriculture and society as a whole. To learn more and apply, visit rnmf.org scholarship before October 15th. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Harvest begins, soil testing and fall fertilizer plants follow closely behind. Today's Iron Talk should give you some food for thought to increase the return on your fertility investments. Fall fertilization can be great because you give dry fertilizer products like MAP and DAP more time to break down and become available. Plus, it's one less job you have to do in the spring. However, it's my contention many farm operations will be wasting money on fertilizer this fall, and that means there's an opportunity to get a better return on your fertilizer investment dollar. Here are a few ideas. First of all, fall urea is a bad idea. Urea is not the best form of end to use when you got months before you'll plant and there's a possibility of heavy snow or rain between now and then. I know you may think differently about anhydrous, but if you're going to use something in the fall, that may be one of the better options. And of course, ammonium sulfate could be a good option in the fall too. Otherwise, wait until spring. You'll often save yourself 10, 20, maybe even 60% of the product by putting it out a little bit closer to when the crop needs it instead of losing some over the winter. Okay, my second point is about banding. And banding is just so much more efficient than broadcast fertility. Especially if you've got high calcium and high pH soils, nutrient tie-up is a real thing. For example, if calcium ties up phosphorus, it becomes insoluble in water and it may never come available for a future crop. By banding, you keep nutrients concentrated so they naturally resist some of that tie-up. Also, speaking specifically about phosphorus, you could protect it by using a source like ProGerminator that is going to avoid a lot of that tie-up in your soil. Third thing I've got, deep placement is much better than shallow incorporation or leaving nutrients on the soil surface. We prefer to knife our fertility deep. We like P and K down 10 inches deep, directly underneath the crop. And we'll plant that seed right over that fertility band. Also, we protect our nutrients from runoff, and we get away from that nutrient stratification in the top few inches of soil. Fall fertilization is going to happen to some degree, no matter what I say on our show today. And it's not always a bad thing. Just pick the right products and use the proper equipment to be efficient and environmentally conscious. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. You can learn more at agphdinsider.com, and you can also subscribe right there. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.